to our harvest service today. Um, it's good to have all of you with us um, on this morning as we celebrate all the goodness that God brings us. Um, we also are celebrating Edward's baptism today. We've been waiting for this for a while, haven't we? <laughs> um, because of all the regulations. So it's really lovely that we're able to finally be able to baptize him. So we just come to give thanksgiving to um, just thank the Lord for all that he has given us and all that he has provided. So as we begin our service, um, before um, I will do notices later, but I'm going to ask our community singers to start with our first song. Brilliant. It's, it is so lovely to hear music and song in the church again. Um, unfortunately, as a congregation, we're still unable to sing together, but it is lovely, and thank you for coming and singing for us this morning. Um, just a couple of notices before we begin. Traditionally, we um, would give um, towards a different event at this moment, but we, um, the school visits and things have been um, set aside at this time. So we're um, asking that um, at the back there is a collection for the church at this moment as um, there is need to um, 
well, it's been a few months without offerings and money in the church. So if you feel you can give, there is a collection plate at the back. Also, our um, uh, home groups are starting again, but we're doing so virtually. So if you are interested in being a part of our home group, I think, it is it Joe or is it, is it Joe? So Joe is going to lead tomorrow um, evening. Um, we, we have a Zoom meeting ID and password. So if you would like to be a part of our virtual um, house group and have some discussion and prayer together, please do um, let me know and I'll make sure that you get the numbers that are needed today. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's, have I forgotten anything else, Sarah? No, I can't think of anything else right at the moment. So um, it's lovely to have you with us. We will begin our service now as we come before the Lord to thank him for all that he has done for us during this past year. Right. The Lord be with you. God is the creator with imagination gathered into the universe of wonder. And every living thing is a glimpse of God, and every sound and song is a note of God, and every touching warmth between us is the mystery of God. So we come now to a time where we just celebrate being together, um, having a children's song, and John is going to come and lead us in that. It's our children's time, and there are very few children here this morning, but we'll, we'll go with it anyway. We'll hope that some are watching online. If you've not noticed, we're, we put this online at the end of the service for those who can't be with us. So this morning is harvest, and uh, a time when we celebrate God's provision for us, and the fact that all we eat is, is from Him, isn't it? Um, and no doubt we've been past many farmers' fields on the way here this morning. And we celebrate he is good to us, he is generous with us. There is nothing that he cannot do. So we're going to sing that this morning. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing that he cannot do. Now I wonder if, if you want to keep an eye on Kim, and she can help us with the actions. <laughs> so do stand with us. And we can do the actions, of course. We can't technically sing, but we can do the actions. So do it with all your heart. <laughs> My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. The mountains are his, the rivers are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. The mountains are his, the rivers are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. Well done, do take a seat. So we have the words of the peace at the moment. Um, obviously, we can't shake hands, unfortunately, but um, please do shoot a smile at people if you can. You can take your mask off for 30 seconds and just shoot a smile across. Let us say the words. <laughs> so let's say the words of the peace. The harvest of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So in friendship, let us greet one another in the name of God. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So shoot a smile if you can. <laughs> peace be with you. <laughs> Lots of lovely waving going on. Brilliant. 
So we just come time to a time now where we come and bring our hearts before the Lord, set our hearts right in preparation for the baptism and preparation for all that God has for us this week. So it's time just to say sorry to God and make our hearts right before him. Lord, you give justice to those who are suffering and bread to those who hunger. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you loose those who are bound and open the eyes of the blind. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you watch over the stranger in the land and uphold the orphan and the widow. Lord, have mercy. So let us just take a time of silence to come before the Lord and ask him and say sorry for anything we might have done wrong. So we say together, Lord, have mercy upon us. Forgive us where we have gone wrong and sinned, and help us to walk from now on in your way. Amen. May the God of love and power bring you back to himself, forgive you and free you from your sins, and restore you to the newness of life by his Spirit. Amen. And our prayer for today. Eternal God, you, you crown the year with your goodness, and you give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory, for the relief of those in need, and for our own well-being. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So John is now going to lead us in a song. Again, you can hum along, <laughs> but we can't sing. As we can't sing, do use this time to, to reflect. Uh, I'm no soloist, so don't focus on my voice, but focus on the, the glorious words that are up on the screen. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness. To thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. 
pardon for sin and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings all mine with ten thousand beside great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Gospel reading is from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 21. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. The parable of the two sons. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him but the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This is the word of God. I speak now in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So Jesus speaks to us today about what it means to truly be a child of his. What is it that qualifies us to be called Christians? When I was a teenager, a few years ago, there was a, a pretty radical singer and evangelist. His name was Keith Green. Some of you who have been Christian for a long time might remember him. He sang and spoke the truth um, very well. And one of his concerts I went to, I will never forget. He said, going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than going to McDonald's makes you a hamburger. And I thought it was hilarious at the time, but I never forgot it. It was a line that stuck out to me quite profoundly. And it's not because we physically come into the building. It's not because we sit on the DCC or the PCC. It's not because we do flowers or sing in the choir. All those things are very good and very welcome, and they're a part of the ministry of the church. So don't get me wrong, they're important. But God's word has told us that there is one essential thing that defines us as Christians. 
That is love. They will know you are my disciples by your love for him and one another. Love is the key to everything. Without it, we are nothing. We have our familiar scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It says, if we speak of the tongues of mortals and angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If we are, so if we are to be called Christians, Paul maps out for us what that means in Philippians. He says, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourself. Look each of you, let each of you look not at your own interests, but the interests of others. Let that same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Paul wanted us to see what was going to, what, sorry, Paul wanted us to see if we were going to be God's people, uh, he was calling us to do everything out of love. One of the things that's really hit me recently, um, and how much love that people have for one another during this crisis. We have phoned each other, shopped for one another, supported one another in so many ways. It's been absolutely amazing to watch. We've showed each other the love of God, the love of humanity, and what it means to truly be community. The harvest is all about that as well. It is, it is those out there on the farms who have gone above and beyond to help us be fed during this time, to keep the groceries and the food on the shelves. Even when we saw it was impossible to get flour, during this time they worked endlessly to get food on our shelves. It is about loving and caring, being the people God has called us to be. When we look at the two sons, the truth is they were both wrong. They both messed up. The difference is one of them realized it and the other did not. One was able to access love and forgiveness as he was willing to turn his heart and realize that it was wrong. The other did not access that forgiveness because he would not look at his wrongdoings and he would not change his heart. The message of the parable is that if we respond to the call of the Father and turn our hearts towards him, which is one of the vows we will take, make during the baptism, then we'll be able to access that same forgiveness, regardless of what we have done in the past. All of us have to say no, all of us have said no to the Lord in the past. But as soon as we say yes, the past is washed away and no longer counts against us in God's eyes. It doesn't matter what our past contains. All that matters is that we're willing to say yes. I want to be that kind of Christian, the one that says yes, the type that welcomes others and is willing to go the extra mile to show someone the love of God. I'm not perfect and nor do I get it right all the time. Sometimes I might even be like that son who said yes but didn't, or who said no but did it anyways when I realized that I was rebelling. The main point is, is we can try. We will and err on the side of love. So who are we going to be this morning? Like the parable of the two sons, we have two responses we can make. We can be like the first son and say, and say the right things look the part, but our hearts are far from the truth. Or we can be like the second son. We might get it wrong sometimes, but we realize where we've gone wrong and we decide to do what's right. If we choose love, if we try our best for those around us, if we walk in humility, if we can be the people God has called us to be and walk in love, then we'll be his disciples. Today we baptize Edward, and he becomes a member of God's family through baptism. It is that kind of love that he needs to see so that he can grow to be the person he is called to be. We are that example of God's love to him and to others around us to help them to grow and know what it means to be Christians. It is my harvest prayer today that we, with all our faults, will be known for our love of God and, for what, and of one another. Even when we fall short, we can pick ourselves up, dust each other off, 
and try again. That is being a Christian, walking in love. So let us be known by that love. Amen. So we're now going to come to the time of baptism. And I just realized I left my notes in the vestry. I'll be right back. So um, Nia and Caroline and Edward and Sarah, if you come forward. And we'll end in the Lord's Prayer. So Duncan, if you'd like to come. And we'll end in the Lord's Prayer after this is finished. Let us offer our prayers to God for the life of the world and for all God's people in their daily life and work. God, the beginning and end of all things in your providence and care, you watch unceasingly over creation. We offer our prayers that in us and in your people, you will, your will may be done according to your wise and loving purpose in Christ our Lord. Lord of all life, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all through whom we receive subsistence and life for farmers and agricultural workers, for packers, distributors and company boards. <coughs> As you have so ordered our life that we depend upon each other, enable us by your grace to seek the well-being of others before our own. Lord of all creation, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for governments and aid, aid agencies and those areas of the world where there is disaster drought and starvation. <clears throat> By the grace of your spirit, touch our hearts and the hearts of all who live in comfortable plenty and make us wise stewards of your gifts. Lord of all justice, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those who are ill, remembering those in hospital and nursing homes and all who are known to us. We pray for all who care for them Give skill and understanding to all who work for their well-being. Lord of all compassion, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We remember those who have died, whom we entrust to your eternal love in the hope of resurrection to a new life. Lord of all peace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We offer ourselves to your service by asking that by the Spirit at work in others, us, others may receive a rich harvest of love and joy and peace. Lord of all faithfulness, hear our prayer. prayer. God of grace, as you are ever at work in your creation, so fulfill your wise and loving purpose in us all, for whom we pray, that with them and in all that you have made, your glory may be revealed and the whole earth give praise to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence the prayer our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So just before we have our final blessing, I want to say a huge thank you to the ladies who have, as always, decorated the church this morning. They've done a beautiful job. I, even as I walked up the, the path and saw the wheelbarrow with that lovely arrangement in it, it was beautiful. So thank you, ladies, for doing that. And I also want to apologize. We can't have our harvest supper this year. I know it's a, a highlight of the year um, coming together and having um, stew together. And I hope and pray that next year we'll be able to celebrate together um, bigger than we ever have before when we're able to um, come together and share supper one more time. So um, that just leaves me to um, 
ask the community singers to sing our blessing. And then there'll be a video of we plow the fields and scatter as we go out. keep you as you go into this week. May you know his face shining upon you. Amen. <laughs>